Welcome to Celebrity Spotlight Radio with your host, Antonio Sayan. Don't forget to please subscribe to our Anchor Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcast. I came across this amazing story, and I just love stories, especially if the tale is true. This is Hollywood's history during the 1930s. I thought I would tell this story because I believe it would have an impact on today. Let's go back to the 1930s. That's right, 1930s. There was an actor. His name was William Billy Haynes. He was known as America's top box office movie star. Actually, um, William Billy Haynes, he was one of the leading men um, in, in the 1920s in Hollywood. Uh, he started as a silent uh, film star, uh, but he was talented enough to make the move to uh, talkies, which they referred to in those days as when uh, there was no more silent films and audio started to hit and rise in film. Billy Haynes was, um, put it this way, he wasn't the type of person that would stay in the closet. He was very open about his relationship. And um, as you can see, a lot of people now in, in today's generation are more open and um, it's, it's accepted in Hollywood. It's accepted in everywhere, you know. But in those days, um, in, they frowned upon um, if you were gay. He even had a lived-in partner for many, many years. Um, his name was Jimmy Shields. You gotta remember in those days, um, a lot of the studio heads, um, they wanted the leading men to marry women and, and have that illusion that they were heterosexual. Billy Haynes was asked to break up with his partner and he refused. I mean, they even introduced uh, something called the Hayes Production Code in 1930, which is a set of moral guidelines that actors were instructed to follow that prohibited homosexual behavior. But since the famous actor was like top notch, I mean, he was uh, incredible. He, he was in the peak of his stardom. So he was able to uh, have that clause removed from his contract and he actually continued acting. But uh, several of his movies uh, didn't perform well in the box office, so uh, there was a lot of pressure on him. This part blew me away. I mean, I couldn't believe, I, I couldn't believe this when I read this, you know. Um, it's it just, I guess because, you know, we're in the now generation, <laughs> not the then generation. So it's like, uh, I don't even, I look at it like normal to me. It's always, in, in, my, in my family, you know, my sister's been gay since she was born. So I just, you know, it, it doesn't phase me any, you know, at all. I don't treat people differently. I don't look at them differently. You know, everyone to me, I look at them as human. But when I heard that the MGM, the, the top guy, the tyrant, I call him, Louis B. Mayer, M-A-Y-E-R. I mean, he gave him an ultimatum. Break up with Shields, his partner, okay, for a studio-arranged marriage or lose his career. When I say studio-arranged marriage, it means that he must marry a woman. I mean, when Mayer called him into his office, I mean, this is a rumor, of course, you know, it's strictly rumor, but it's like, if you do research, that, that's what you see, you know, but I kind of believe it, <laughs> because in those days, it was like frowned upon, but you know, and he, you know, Haynes walks into his office, 
you know, and, and Mary demands that he marries a woman. And he turns around and he says, I am married. Haynes kept his cool. He responded with, with exactly what I said. I am married. And he walked out and he ended his film career right on the spot. Bravo. Bravo, William Billy Haynes. Believe it or not, um, Billy Haynes, uh, he did leave um, Hollywood um, as acting as a career. And uh, what he did is he became a top leading decorator. And he was very successful, you know, and he lived his truth. That was his truth. And uh, he was not going to live a lie. And even though he was a top leading actor, and he most likely would have gone far, but you know what? It wasn't worth it to him. So I say bravo to him. Bravo. I think everyone now in this generation should live their truth, whatever that truth is, you know, and stand by it. And uh, don't let anybody uh, put you into illusion, you know, and just follow the truth. I think Haynes was very responsible for uh, laying the foundation. What an incredible person. When I read the story, I just, you know, I put myself in his position. And, you know, even though I'm not gay, um, I just put myself in his position. And I would have put my foot down too, you know, and because here's the thing. Uh, if you're in love with someone, it doesn't matter. It, you, you're, not, you're, you're not in love with a man. You're not in love with a woman. You're in love with the person, the soul of the person. That's what I believe in, you know. And he did the right thing. And I, I really, truly believe that he, he created and laid the, uh, the bricks uh, for this uh, foundation uh, of today. And because he was a decorator, he was actually... Um, he was like de most in demand. He was friends with uh, Joan Crawford. Uh, that was one of his first clients. And, and from there, he just exploded and he was very popular. When I first read the story, I just had to tell it because I, I, I really want people to, to <clears throat> really uh, know this story because I just feel it's fantastic. Because this happened in the 30s, for God's sakes, in the 30s. You know, he put his foot down and he refused, you know, and he chose his relationship. You know, his relationship came first, not Hollywood stardom. That is a blessing. Remember this, be who you are. Don't be what somebody else wants you to be. Just so you know, Haynes and Shields, they remained happily married for nearly 50 years until Haynes' death. William Haynes chose his husband over stardom at MGM. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. This is Antonio Sayant signing off from Celebrity Spotlight Radio. And don't forget, please subscribe to Celebrity Spotlight Radio on our Anchor podcast, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcast. God bless. Until next time.